So we're going to be doing a couple of different Lewis dot structure, the drawings, uh, for different molecules. So the first one we're going to look at, um, the first thing we're going to look at is the Honk rule. So just remembering that if it is a hydrogen uh, or halogen, it's going to have one bond that it will make. Each of these have one electron to share to get to octet, or to have eight valence, or in hydrogen's case, two valence electrons in its outer shell. If it is oxygen or sulfur, it's going to create two bonds. It will have two electrons to share, whether that is a double or two single bonds. Oxygen and sulfur will form two bonds. Nitrogen will form three bonds. It has three valence to share. So it will form three bonds. Carbon has four valence electrons. So to get to eight, it will pair up all four of its valence electrons, whether that is a uh, four single, two double, um, totaling up to four bonds for carbon. So first we're going to start with water. So H2O has two hydrogen, and one oxygen, since there's no number listed. Hydrogen has one valence, oxygen has six total. Hydrogen's gonna want one bond, and oxygen's gonna want two bonds. We need to figure out our central atom, and the central atom is gonna be the one with the most amount of bonds. So in this case, oxygen will have two, so we're gonna put oxygen in the center, and the hydrogens on the outside. Each hydrogen will have one electron to share. Oxygen will want to bond with two of its electrons. So it will share these two. We're first going to make our uh, shared bonds, our shared pairs. So here we have one bond, one single. Between the other oxygen and hydrogen, we have another single bond. So we've used two of oxygen's uh, electrons that are shared. Now we're gonna go and add our lone pairs. So we have one lone pair and our second lone pair. So we're gonna look to see if it follows octet. So here oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons now. Hydrogen has two for this one and two for that one. So yes, it follows octet. Does it follow the Honk rule? So does hydrogen have a single bond? This hydrogen has a single, and this hydrogen has a single. So yes, it does. Oxygen, does it have two bonds? One and two, two bonds for oxygen. And the correct number of electrons. If we have two hydrogen, um, that's gonna give two electrons to here. Oxygen gives six, so there should be a total of eight valence in this uh, drawing here. So we're going to count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So yes, it has the correct number of electrons also. We are going to move on to CH2O. So here we have carbon, which following the honk rule makes four bonds. Hydrogen in the honk rule makes one bond and oxygen making two bonds. So we need to identify our central atom as the one that makes the most amount of bonds. So in this case, that's gonna be carbon. So carbon is our central atom. Oxygen is gonna want two bonds, and it can have two single or two double. So we're gonna put oxygen on one side, since carbon is in the center, and we're gonna put the two hydrogen on the other side of carbon. Each hydrogen is gonna contribute one electron. Oxygen is going to contribute two, and carbon wants to share all four. It's gonna share one with each of the hydrogens and two with the oxygen. And this is gonna help us when we check to make sure it follows the Honk rule. So for oxygen, 
oxygen's gonna want two bonds. So we have one bond and two bonds between carbon for oxygen. Hydrogen wants one bond. So here's one bond for this hydrogen and a one bond for the top hydrogen. So that follows our honk rule. And carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. It has two singles between the hydrogens and one double. Now we're gonna go add our lone pairs and make sure we have all our correct amount of electrons. So the only one with lone pairs is going to be oxygen and it's going to have two lone pairs. So we have a total of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons. Carbon gave four, hydrogen gave two, and oxygen gave six, adding up to 12 electrons. So that is good as well. Our next one, we have CH2Cl. So for CH2Cl, carbon is going to give four. There are two hydrogen, so two valence from hydrogen, and one chlorine, which has seven. So there's going to be a total of 13 valence for this molecule. Carbon bonds four times, hydrogen bonds once, and chlorine as a halogen also bonds one time. So looking at what the central atom would be, since carbon bonds the most, we're gonna put it in the center. Two hydrogen on the outside. And two chlorine. I missed the two on this one. So two chlorine. So we're gonna add uh, some valence in this case. So if we were to have, uh, our carbon is going to share all four, one with each of the halogen and hydrogen here. Hydrogen is going to share one, and chlorine is also going to share one because the others are already paired off. It has three lone pairs. So carbon has one, two, three, four bonds, four singles. Each of the hydrogens has one bond, like in the honk rule, and each of the chlorine has one bond in the honk rule. So we're gonna go and just add our three lone pairs to each of our chlorine. And this is CH2Cl2. Now we're gonna look at patterns between C2H2, C2H4, and C2H6. So what happens if we just change the hydrogens in a molecule? So for this, the carbons, they have four bonds, and the hydrogens all have one. So for four, five, and six, these problems, they're all gonna have carbon as the central atom. So we have two carbons, so we're gonna put our two carbons, we have two hydrogen also. So we're gonna separate those one to each carbon because the carbon wanna be able to make four bonds and hydrogen only bonds one time. So each hydrogen's gonna share one. Each carbon's gonna share one with those hydrogen. And now carbon has three more electrons that have not yet been shared. So it's gonna share it between the two carbon. So we have one, two, three. So this is a triple bond. In this triple bond, these carbon are sharing two, four, six electrons, and then they have eight when they share with the hydrogen. So each carbon is getting octet. It has three, four, bonds following the honk rule and each hydrogen gets two and has a single bond following the honk rule. For C2H4, our carbons are again in the middle, but in this case we have four hydrogen. So our four hydrogen we're going to split between the two carbon and we're going to give two hydrogen to each carbon. The hydrogen both 
all shields still sharing one electron. So the carbon is going to share one with each hydrogen to start. So, so far we've used two of the four electrons for carbon. So the other two we're going to put in the center for each carbon. And that's going to create a double bond between the two carbons. Each carbon still has two, four, six, eight. So it still meets the octet and it has four bonds. So it follows the honk rule. So we went from a triple, if it had one hydrogen it was sharing with, a double bond if there were two. And we're gonna look at if there are six hydrogen, we have our two carbons still in the center, each carbon having three hydrogen to bond with. The hydrogen each giving one still. And the carbon is having four that is still sharing. So we have one, two, three. And then our fourth one here, we have one, two, three, and our fourth one in the center here. So we have one bond, two, three bonds. These are three singles between the hydrogen and carbon. Our fourth bond is a single between the two carbons. So each carbon still gets two, four, six, eight, has four bonds, like in the Hawk rule. Uh, next, we're going to look at PCL3. So for PCL3, phosphorus is uh, with nitrogen in the honk rule. So it is going to bond three times. And chlorine is with hydrogen, so it's going to have one bond. So with three bonds, phosphorus is going to be our central atom with the three chlorine. Each chlorine, since it's gonna have one bond, it's gonna share one electron. The phosphorus, since it has three bonds, it's going to share three electrons. These will create three bonds. Each of the chlorine will have one, and the phosphorus gets three to follow the Hunk rule. Now we're going to add our lone pairs. Phosphorus has one lone pair, and chlorine has three lone pairs. So we're gonna add our one lone pair to phosphorus, and to each of our chlorines, we're adding our three lone pairs. So our honk rule is met. Now we just need to check on our electrons. If phosphorus has five valence and there's one phosphorus, we're gonna add that there are three chlorine that have seven valence each. So 21 plus five, there should be a total of 26 valence. Each chlorine, we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and 26. So we meet our valence also. Next, we're gonna look at HF, hydrogen and fluorine. Both of those, that is a hydrogen and halogen, they're both going to want only one bond. Hydrogen gives one, fluorine also gives one, and we're going to add our three lone pairs. Fluorine has two, four, six, and eight to get octet. Hydrogen has two and they both have their single bonds. Uh, our last ones we're gonna look at, we're gonna have carbon and oxygen, CO2. Carbon forms four bonds. Oxygen forms two bonds. Whichever one is greater is gonna be our central atom. So we're gonna put carbon in the middle, our oxygen on the outside. Oxygen wants two bonds, so it's gonna share two. Carbon wants four, so it's gonna share two to each oxygen. We get four bonds for carbon and two for each oxygen. Then we just add our lone pairs. 